hello team and welcome back to the channel so today's video is going to be day 7 of python for devops where we are going to study working with sockets and i'm gonna teach you how you can utilize python socket library for network programming with multiple examples also i'll teach you about socket from scratch so you don't forget anything okay so make sure to watch that video uh, watch watch this video till end so that you don't miss anything and you are able to work with python sockets library python socket library okay so coming back to today's topic so today we have to study this part working with sockets utilizing python socket library for network programming okay so before anything first thing uh, first thing that we should know is what is socket library and what exactly is socket okay so python basically has multiple libraries which are pre-written like function which contains multiple pre-written modules and functions which we use for specific things okay so one of the uh, library that python has is known as socket library which is specifically used for network communication or network programming right so what first of all like to understand socket library and its functionalities we should first understand what is socket okay so socket is nothing but a end point on a network for example consider like this is laptop one or computer one this is computer two and they are connected over certain network right so if we want to communicate like establish communication between two these two computers and transfer data from like among themselves what we should do first of all the network that is connecting both of them should be having an end point by end point basically what i mean is a certain point like a, for example this is one end point this is another end point right so whatever information will be coming from here it will go from here then uh, like uh, come out from here right so this is like endpoint the point where like which is used for communication okay on the network socket is the endpoint for communication between two machines over a network right basically socket a socket can be used to establish con uh, connections send and receive data as well as close connection okay so a uh, socket is endpoint so it can also close the connection between these two uh, devices got it so it's very simple you can just remember that socket is an endpoint which is used for uh, creating as well as closing connections uh, which will help us to send or like receive data correct okay now coming to next point sockets are basically of two types okay because uh, uh, okay let me just show you what are the types first socket type which is known as uh, socket sorry first socket type is known as stream sockets second uh, socket type is known as datagram sockets so let me explain you what exactly are these sockets let me increase the size yes so first of all talking about stream sockets so these provides basically these these stream sockets are reliable and provide a, provide a connection oriented communication channel okay they are very reliable and they create proper connection oriented communication channel and they use the protocols like tcp okay and it ensures or like it makes sure that data whatever you send is received on the uh, another device wherever we are sending okay so the way that we use this uh, stream sockets like in our programming how or in what ways we should be using is this format we will write socket dot sock underscore underscore stream okay this is the format in which we are going to use this in our uh, like program whatever program python program we write right okay sorry this is not fatagram this is datagram so stream sockets is nothing but a it's, it's a socket type which is going to create a reliable communication channel and it uses tcp okay second we have sorry my mistake multiple spelling mistakes i have done today second so, uh, so socket type that we have is datagram sockets so these are connectionless and provide an unreliable uh, message oriented communication ch channel okay and they use udp protocols which is user datagram protocol and it does not guarantee that the data that you are sending may be delivered or not correct that means clearly you can understand that if it comes to usage of these sockets we should always go with uh, stream sockets okay okay team so for datagram sockets the way that we write in our uh, python programs is going to be 
socket dot sock in capital underscore tgrm okay but again as i say that uh, since uh, stream sockets is uh, much reliable and works better so we are going to use uh, stream sockets only okay so this is of uh, socket types right okay let's talk about address families so in case of uh, socket library of python we have uh, multiple address families but two of the most commonly used address families are is uh, first of all we are going to use for ip v4 okay so for for ip v4 we have uh, the way that we define ip v4 address is going to be in this format socket dot af underscore i net let me make it bigger okay so this is going to be uh, this is the uh, uh, address family for ipv4 address okay the way that we are going to write in our source code for ipv4 address is socket dot af underscore i net okay and this is going to be used since it's ipv4 so it's going to be used for a 32 bit address space okay then again talking about uh, uh, address family for ipv6 okay this is another format so here nothing you need to change you just need to change little bit which is going to be add a 6 here okay but again like in our program we are going to be, we usually use the ipv4 addresses right with 32 bits so this is the one that we are going to use great okay so the third concept in socket library is about creating a uh, creating a socket how do we create a socket so that uh, let me show you in visual studio code there we can understand it in better okay let me remove these things first let me create a new file which will be uh, sock.py okay so when we uh, talk about like creating a socket the way that we are going to write is first of all we need to import the socket library or socket module you can say and that we can do in this format import socket so once this is done then we can create a socket object when we talk about creating socket basically we need to create a socket object which we can do in this format let's create a variable server underscore socket okay and then socket because we are using the uh, library socket library so socket dot socket and here we need to define the uh, address family and socket type which we can as i told you how we are going to use for address family we are going to use socket dot af underscore i net this is for ipv4 right then for socket type we, will going, we are going to use socket dot soc stream why we are using soc stream because it is more reliable and it, it uh, ensures that whatever data we are transferring it is stretching uh, reaching okay let me correct this pin okay so in this format we can create a socket right okay let's talk about next step which we should do is binding a socket so before a socket can be used for communication it needs to be bound to a specific uh, address and port on the local machine right so binding a socket can be done we again going to create a new a variable which will be server underscore address okay and inside here we are going to define our like uh, ip address and the port okay which we can do in this format local host comma and port so port let's say uh, i am going to use uh, this port okay one thing that you should remember is let me write it down that port on a machine can be opened between 0 to 65535 this is the uh, range that a port can be opened okay great so now we understand like how we can uh, okay so one second yeah we are talking about binding a socket so first what we did we created a variable server address inside which we are storing the ip address and the port where we want to open the communication channel okay then for binding it uh, we can write the code in this format server underscore socket dot bind okay 
so this first part th that is the socket that we have created basically socket object and we are binding it with server address now uh, yeah so now if you look cl clearly we have this uh, socket created and we have the server address also so we are what we are doing we are binding the uh, server socket sorry we are binding the socket with server address server address contains the ip address local ip address of the local host machine and the port on which communication is, is going to happen okay okay so once you have like created these steps next step is to uh, basically uh, listening and collect, make sure that uh, there is a proper channel open for listening and accepting connections okay so for a server it needs to start listening for incoming connections okay when a client tries to connect the server uses uh, accept connections function to establish a connection okay so let me show you how we will do that server underscore socket this might be little bit like uh, not so easy to understand but just understand that socket library is usually used for uh, creating communication networks and like uh, creating like uh, like probably uh, like uh, properly creating a communication channel between server and client okay this much you should know okay so now we are going to create uh, servers we are going to make this socket listen okay and that we, we can write here okay so here basically uh, this five you are seeing first of all you can see we are using a, a module listen and inside it we have provided five five is going to be the value for q so this much data should be inside q okay okay now what we are going to do is again uh, for like uh, making sure that uh, client socket also uh, client socket and client address are able to connect to our this server socket okay this we are writing for server socket right so for uh, make sure that client for making sure that client socket and client server sorry client address can be easily connected to our server so for that we can write in this format client socket which we are going to create soon and client address if you notice it's the same thing that we created here for server separately we are going to create for client also right client and go here client address equal to we are connecting it to server socket dot accept accept is the function which we are going to use to like accept connection from the client okay okay so final step that we need to do is basically connecting to a server okay proper program i will show you in a minute but first let us understand how things are happening so see for a client once we have like client ready so client it needs to connect to server using the server address and port okay so what we can do we can write in this format <coughs> excuse me <coughs> client underscore socket dot connect now we are going to use a connect function and here uh, like how client will connect to server using server address server address you can see we have defined here right so same thing we are going to put here which will be server underscore address right okay so connection is established between client and server right next thing that we need to do is sending and receiving data okay so for that we have function send and receive okay rcv sorry but the, yeah rcv these two functions we are having which will be used for sending and receiving data okay now it's better that i show you all this thing in actual okay so here you can see this is the uh one second okay so this is the uh this is a uh, server server socket okay here we are creating a server socket where host will be this one which is actually local host same thing that we are creating okay here next what we are doing server socket bind so uh, we are binding the socket to server address which will be the host and port right okay next what we are doing is listening on host and port that we have created and after that we are just printing the same thing like listening on so and so okay next what we are doing is accepting a connection and like 
from the client socket okay and then receiving data from client socket and yeah we are printing also data but then we have uh, we are whatever data we received we are going to send it back to client okay and then after after the communication is done we are going to close uh, client and uh, server socket okay if i go here on the client here also similar way we are creating client socket host and port and connecting to host and port connect to server and uh, send a message to server so this message will be sent to server and then again server will send it back to client okay so once we send this message to the server server will send back to client and in this format you know like i told you receive function is going to be used for receiving the message from uh, server okay and yeah then we can print it okay team so to execute this and to check if our server client connection is working fine or not first of all we need to run the server is in this format we can run so you can see server is listening on port uh, 123456 on localhost right but as of now it's not not doing anything okay so in next two powershell i will i have opened two terminal second terminal i'm going to execute client and you can see as soon as uh, we ran it it was able to find out that uh, uh, a response from server was received as hello server okay and this confirms you can see here also uh, like this uh, server also received hello server so in this format in this way we can confirm that our client server uh, connection is working fine that we created using socket library okay so yeah team uh, that is uh, all for today's video and i hope you understood what is socket library and how do we use it it's the steps are simple you create a socket object you define your host and board or basically like socket address okay then you connect your server to client like two two files you are <coughs> you need to create one for server and one for client okay so yeah have a nice day and thanks for watching